mm -hmm. on the side there. Okay, so a couple of things I can do. So number one, if I'm just going to write something, you know, I have chicken scratch. Let me write my favorite word, shoehorn. I don't know why it's my favorite word, but it's my favorite word. Um, so I click on that, and it's become an object. Okay, so the moment that I put down the pen, whatever I was just creating actually becomes something that I can play with and move around. So I can move it to wherever I need it on the board. I can also change it from my chicken scratch to text um, to be able to have it be in that form if I have really neat, um, messy handwriting. One of the problems that can happen though, uh, you're asking a question. Okay, so here I am writing shoehorn. Someone asked a question. What's your dog's name? Chester. Okay, and sometimes it will have a delay or a pause. Okay, and so what happened was when I stopped to answer the question, stopped writing, the computer thought I was finished, and then assigned an object to that particular word and saved it. So in this case, I could, if I click on both of them, combine them into one word, you know, recognize all, um, and make it together, then there's going to be that space in the, in, the, in the center that's a problem. So whenever you're writing, I usually will do this with students. I'll keep finishing and I'll say, wait one second, so because I keep it all together that way and not have any of the mess or problem I'm going to convert the word into text. Uh, if I want to get rid of it, um, I can just delete. Um, but this one, let's use for a second. Um, there are a couple of other things that are available for me to use in this uh, piece here. There is a cloner um, that will simply make a direct copy of it. There's also the infinite cloner which I love because it means that I can just do this and create copies out of it <laughs> like it was multiple now. Um, what's also nice is that for some reason they made the sides bounce, so if you watched, um, it'll bounce off. I, I don't get what that does. You know, I mean, it, it, it's cool for little kids, but I can just keep bouncing them around and have them fun as I go. Um, so again, strange things that they put in here. Little kids love that, but I guess, I guess big kids did too. But, and that's perfect. That's fine. How do you use? the periodic table. So in this case, um, what you do here, and I'm going to actually borrow a couple of these because there actually is a course record, um, is you play this one game called Find the Elements. Okay, and so uh, we'll do common elements. Okay, now in this case, what's going to happen is I'm going to start the game and I have to figure out where these are. I need your help. Okay, so if I don't know where something is, those of you, who's a science major? Wants oh, to be a science good. teacher? Oh, good. Biology glad, I'm glad you're here, though. Not, not this not Okay, so now we'll test the rest of you. The course oh, record is 9.8 seconds, done by someone who had their chemistry degree at, from Dartmouth. And so they actually were pretty good at this. We'll see if we can top that tonight. All right, so carbon is C. Okay, phosphorus, P. Okay, chlorine is CL. Okay, sodium is NA. Top left, 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 Top right. Know, top no, where does he go? It's the, the gray. middle. Top in the right. middle. Right. Very top. Wait, wait, where? Huh? Very top. Floating. It's gray. Yeah, it's, it's gray. by itself. It's, it's straight up. up. All by itself. Oh, it was bad. Bad, bad. Okay, <laughs> now, that was terrible. Like, you know, I should have known where those were. But Emily's going to do better. So, come on up. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> you get it. Give a round of applause. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. Hi, Emily. It took me 25 seconds, and I have several degrees. That's okay. I taught history for 10 years. So what she's going to do now, she has to sort of beat my, well not sort of, just to beat my record. So I think she can do it. So, plus, they may give you some repeats, so you may actually get benefits from my problems before. So hit start, let's see how she does. Oh. 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 PB. Yeah, it's PB. PB. Help her. It's at the bottom, bottom row. It's gray. In the dark gray. Or PB. Right next to IT. Yeah, right there. Like, oh. Silver. <laughs> AU. AU. It does seem that we should have somebody who is like a science person. But now you've been very good at this, Heather. We can throw Robbie of the Wolves, like you know. And so, who do we want to have go in this? Robbie, come on up. Robbie. Sean volunteered. <laughs> Thank you. Doesn't matter. She has to beat 24 seconds. Let's see how she does. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> top left. Top left. Top left. Top left. How do you left. know that? No. Oh. Um, yeah. And far right. Any. A green. Yeah. Up. 
Now, the thought here is that if you were to utilize this particular program, it's not going to necessarily change or revolutionize your teaching, but they have built in so many of these programs that what we just did in those last few minutes was far more engaging than anything Mr. Paganelli ever did in my chemistry class for that entire year. And so were we to have played a game like this, we would have been far more engaged, and I bet you I would have known where all of these were when the final test came around. And the beauty of this program is that they have it available for pretty much every subject. And so um, whether it's health, this one's a little um, unpleasant, but that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll call it anyway. There we go. Yeah. And then we also can It actually has some weakness. In boys and girls. When various bodily changes take place. That's a British voice, too. Right? Yeah. More specific. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you who missed that lesson. Slides. So if I'm teaching math, okay, and this happens a lot, um, I have no idea what that could be. Um, but uh, So there's some math on the board, for those of you who are in there. Um, let's actually make it a number, because this actually would be fairly worthless, wouldn't it? Um, so we'll do y minus 12. Um, this is critical. Okay, teacher says that. On the old school whiteboard, they write it up on the board, they write all their stuff on the board, and then what do they have to do? They'll say, all right, everybody, can I erase this? And everybody not knowing what's coming up next says, mm hmm okay, well, then you erase it. And then your several ideas later, and some student says, wait, wait, I, I didn't write that down before, what was that? And you have to pause and say, oh, come on, okay, and then you have to rewrite it. Now, in this program, if I were doing my, let's do some other mathematical piece, Whatever that means. <laughs> okay, so there I have it. Um, I can then make this an object, and then I can insert a link to it to a different page. So in this case, if I wanted to go corner object, um, I can do to page on this computer, page on this file. Um, I can pick first one there, insert the link, and then if the kid, if I knew this was being asked a lot, and they said, okay, what is this link to? I could say, remember this particular problem right there? Okay, that's the one that this ties to. Okay, and that way I can toggle back and forth, which again is an efficiency tool that helps you with a class that may in fact need that kind of repetition or connection between the different things that are there. Is there a quick way to go back to where you were? Or do you have to pr press on the slide? Well, I mean, this is just as quick. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know, because you could press on that one instead of... I would have to, prop to be able to go back and forth, if I knew that ahead of time, so for example, when I'm making like a map you know, in a history class, and I know that people ask a question about, well, who invaded that country again? Um, I'll put a little hyperlink in the corner, okay, and that way I can toggle back and forth. I'll do it on both of the pages. Um, okay. To be honest, I won't do that all the time. That's for the ones I know are going to be consistently being asked and have been asked in the past. And you would only know that after a couple of years of having done that. Okay? All right. Um, let's uh, do a couple more things really quick. Um, I'm going to move this. Um, these actually can be moved. Um, the same way that PowerPoint files can, so they're back to back. Now, if I wanted to show students that these were related even more, I could actually split the screen um, into the two files for people to have everything up at <coughs> once. Now, you'd say, well, could this be used for something else? The answer is, of course, yes, because you have all been in a class where someone has a slide up on the screen, you have already finished copying everything, and somebody else has not finished. Okay, the teacher like, it is sort of uh, patting their foot, trying to move on. They want to keep going because everything is starting to slow down. And uh, he says, hey, can I move this? Like, you know, everyone says, uh-huh. But then Emily in the back says, no, I'm still writing. Like, you know, she wants to write every bloody word. And so with this kind of a program, then you could have both those available so the kids who are fast writers or sloppy writers, like, and they write everything, have everything covered and they can move on. And then the Emilys who are moving slower or are more thorough can then have everything available to them, too. Um, and then by hitting the button again, it goes back to that particular form. Um, this other option down here, okay, let's see if I can find it. Okay, where are we? Sorry. The shade um, allows you to cover everything on the screen and then to utilize it in sort of a reveal process. Um, so if I had a question of the day, then I would have the question on the top, like, you know, there's T, like, you know, and then I can maneuver the slide over I need to to be able to have the material available for the kids that were there. Okay. Alex, you seem amazed. <laughs> Technology is like freaking me out, man. This is awesome. You know, I had no idea that this thing was this exciting. 
Well, again, like, I mean, what you've seen of this from your classes so far has been probably just a snapshot. Like, I mean, there is a sense that for a college classroom, the utility of this is not as extensive as it would be in an elementary classroom, a middle school or high school classroom. But if you utilize this properly, it could make your life a lot easier. Um, and in my, uh, I teach speech, or I teach one of the speech classes, and we utilize this all the time for a lot of presentations that we do. Because it does make sense when you're doing presentations to use some of these slow reveals or to have the split screen to show comparisons. I mean, um, this image right here, um, while it's two math problems, isn't much, but maybe it's two photos. Okay, or maybe it's two pictures. Okay, from history, maybe it's two cartoons, or what, what was taken out from picture to picture, or two documents. Okay, how are these changed? Um, and you'd be able to utilize that to maximum efficiency with your students if you had that planned. Um, now, 